Now that we've reviewed how important it is to make sure that control points are accurate and the theory behind how the total station finds that best fit, let's talk about the best practices for control points and tool setup in the actual field. Before we do that, let's just remind each other of a few things here. On your first day of the job site, it's very important to remember these four things that will set you up for success. Number one, as we've already discussed, make sure you're only using accurate control points. Accurate controls is essential to creating accurate layout. Number two, spend time. Time is very important, establishing your control. And I would recommend that you budget at least one half of a day on that first work day, analyzing, troubleshooting, and verifying that the control points are accurate. Number three, prepare to take what you found regarding the control points and the ones you plan to use and take them to the GC to discuss with them about what you found. Hopefully, what you found can be synced and used by all other trades, making the job site just that much more accurate and also increasing your credibility. Number four, make sure you work with the surveyor. And I'd recommend from day one, if you can be with the surveyor where they are establishing their control points, even better. You can use their control points, you can inspect their control points, and you can observe how they're placing their control points on the job site before they might get moved or hidden, which is bound to happen, at least with a few of them. Remember these four things and you should be successful. But now let's go ahead and get back to the best practices for your control points and tool setup. We are gonna go over nine different practices that you should use with the tool and control point location that are listed here. Feel free to pause and look at what we're gonna go over, but I'll go ahead and get right into it. We're gonna start with the first two that are just center, putting the tool in the center of your layout area, as well as ensuring you have clean angles to your control points. Let me go on and explain that in the next slide. Let me begin by showing you four diagrams of potential ways you might station a total station on a job site. Of course, it's very basic. But as you can see, let's start with putting the total station in the center of the job site. Why do I do that? Well, the main reason why I do that is because when it's in the center of the job site, the tool has more potential to hit more layout points before I have to move it again to finish the job. So if you look at the far left side here, I have a elevator shaft smack dab in the middle of my job site. I do my best to essentially locate the total station, lay out as many points as I can, and then I will move it to lay out the remainder layout points for a maximum of two stationings. If you can lay out an entire job on one stationing, of course you are improving your chances of staying accurate. Multiple stationings simply gives you more room for error. And that's how simple the answer is. There will be jobs where you will have to station multiple times, which is fine. It just means that you have to be extra careful on stationing to your control points and ensuring that they are accurate all, all the time. Now let's talk about angles. Let me put a little blurb up here for a second. When I say that angles are, some of the angles best practices are 90 degree turns to a total station, what I mean by that is when you have your, let's look at the third diagram here. When you have your control point set up and the total station is turning control point to control point on setup, the optimal setup is where the total station turns about 90 degrees between total control points. And all I'm saying is that I, I, as well as a lot of documents on surveying, recommend that that doesn't really get below 45 degrees of a turn or 120 degrees of a turn on control point setup. And that's just because for total stations, for it to minimize the error as much as possible, the total station needs to work with solid angles and solid distances to station itself. Now, let me just say this. If your control points are accurate and they're all dimensionalized correctly and you're using three or four control points, the angles are not going to be nearly as important as ensuring that the control points are dimensionally correct. Angles would probably be secondary to that. But I would encourage you to set yourself up to where your angular inaccuracies will be minimal. So again, if we look at these four drawings, this one angularly will have the most the biggest trouble, especially if my control points are dimensionally slightly incorrect. I would only be adding to that error by giving it somewhat frustrating obtuse angles and acute angles to work with. Having poor angles is not the end of the world. Just do your best with your situation. So now let's move on to the third best practice, which is make sure you can access at least three and preferably four to five control points. Let's explain that. Simply put, if you look at these four diagrams, right now I have access to four control points, which, set, which sounds good. But let's say that some of these get moved or hidden on the job site. 
Well, then I'm down to three or potentially two control points remaining to station my tool if I needed work on the job site. So it's always best practices to station the tool on all the control points you have. And one of the first things you do, instead of laying out your, your points, is to set yourself up for success by measuring additional control points. So the idea here is still to make sure that these control points are on the exterior part of your layout area so that all your layout points fall within them, but at the same time, ensuring that they're easily accessible in the case that you need to move your total station to different parts of your job site and station at different parts of your job site so that the total station will still have access to three, four, or five control points. So if you look, look at the little blurb I've made, Obviously, it gives you flexibility in your stationing location. So if you need to move the total station to different areas of your job site because something might be obstructing the total station in the middle, you now have more flexibility to do that. And secondly, it gives you room to eliminate control points that you find to be inaccurate. The more control points you have, the easier it is to station on four to five control points while at the same time observing which control points you're using and eliminating ones that might have been shifted and are now inaccurate. The more control points you have, the better chance you have of stationing accurately throughout the life of the job. So now let's move on to the next step, which I've already basically gone over in this section, which is make sure that your control points encompass your layout area. Now I explained it once a little bit in the last section, but let me just explain one more time. Here's a diagram. Obviously these control points are on the exterior part of my layout area, but let's say that it looks like this. Okay, where I stationed, here's my station measuring these control points. And obviously you can see that there's some layout points that, I've, that I'm trying to lay out that are beyond the scope of some of the, some of the control points. The issue behind this is simply that when I station my tool, the errors or the accuracies it's telling me that I have has to do with the control points and the layout area that's within the control points. I can't be guaranteed that these layout points will maintain that accuracy if they're not within those control points. Now, if I have a really good stationing, such as let's say that all of these were accurate right here on this, on this diagram here, there's a good chance that yes, I will lay these out accurately. It's just something to be aware of and something that you should probably check one or two times if you are laying out outside the scope of your control points. It's something to just be aware of, but I think it makes sense. It's pretty self-explanatory. So if I was to complete this diagram, obviously in these situations, I'd want to have some control points on the exterior part of these layout points. And maybe if I had to, I'd move the total station down to that area and restation and finish the layout. Just something to be aware of. Now let's move on to number five, which is identify secure control points. And this is going to be an easy one to review because I have pictures. Secure control points are ones that are not going to move. If you're dealing with control points that might move, you might want to try to change the ones you're using. So here's a picture. Obviously I have a, a variety of ones that I've seen. Some I found in, uh, in the real world on the job site and others that I've found on the internet, but they all go towards the same point. If you find control points that are hammered extremely securely in the ground, such as a surveyor pin, even a surveyor coordinate such as this one, or coordinates or control points that are flush and staked deep into the ground, you probably are using pretty secure control points. I know that this one's flagged, but if there is a control point that's kind of flimsily located in the ground that might have moved, you might consider that one a little bit unreliable. It's sometimes you can get good crosses on a job site that indicate a control point, but if they've been dusted off or covered, you might have a little bit of a problem. Here's some other good examples. You have a stake in the ground with a nail head on it. These do have likelihoods of being shoved or moved, so make sure if you have these that you use them, that you use them right away. You also have the common X marks the spot control point that's indicated on a slab with indicators of offsets. Those are pretty secure as well, but sometimes these are laid out incorrectly, so you might need to check that. And again, you have a surveyor pin hammered into wood, which if the wood hasn't shifted and nobody's covered it up, should be pretty reliable. So you know what the control points look like on your job site. Make a determination if they're accurate or not, if they're secure or not. And there's going to be future videos that go over how to troubleshoot control points to ensure that they haven't been shifted and that they haven't moved. So now let's move on to number six, which is use secure backside prisms. And this goes along with number five, but a lot of times you're going to be able to set up control points that are going to be stable and they're never going to move. And they're simply there to be targets for the total station. And let me emphasize, these are very important and they're very reliable. 
if you can start using these more and more often, it's going to be a lot easier for, for you to station the tool, especially if these are stable and accurate when you measure them in. So in this case, you see that this is a glass prism securely fastened to a post. Uh, sometimes you can use these types of prisms if you're using a PLT 300. Make sure that they're securely square to the wall or surface that you're connecting them to. That's all it is. And I have this picture right here because this is a very secure backside prism that actually has a tri brack to ensure it's leveled. And it's actually leveled and stationed over a specific point. Very strong backside. If you're using something like this, it most likely is a very stable point. The whole point of this was to show you good examples of back sight prisms that you might be able to put up on your job site whose purpose is only to stay there and not move that you can use as control points if you need to. So now let's move on to point number seven and only two more to go after this and we'll keep this brief. It's very easy, but basically keep the prism low on the prism pole. Let me show you a diagram. Most of the time when you have a prism rod, your prism is going to be on the top, but the point that you're measuring is actually down here on the bottom. Now, why does this matter? Well, when the prism's on the top, if this prism pole is even slightly out of level, the tool is measuring to the prism, but what you think it's measuring to is the point down below. And let me show you this. This is obviously an exaggerated example. While the tool is measuring the prism, what you have it over is some sort of point at the bottom. If it is at all out of level, you can see that there's going to be some sort of deviation with where the tool is actually measuring the prism and where you actually assume the point you're measuring is actually located. And this is what you want to avoid, and the best way to avoid that is to keep this perfectly level. And what's the best way to minimize all of this altogether is to, yes, still keep it level, but put the prism at the bottom of the rod, and it eliminates a significant portion of any sort of leveling error with the prism rod. If this is not possible, we have other videos available to teach you how to make sure that this rod is level, that the bubble on the rod is calibrated correctly so that you can minimize that error as much as possible. But I hope this makes sense. It's pretty self-explanatory. So now let's move on to point number eight, which essentially is saying, ensure that the total station is secure and that it won't vibrate or slide. Let me go into some pictures. A lot of times when you're on a wooden deck or especially a metal cue deck of sorts, the total station, if it's on a tripod, it might vibrate or slide a lot more than normal. And so a lot of times what would help you is to put it on some sort of column mount or, or anchored steel beam, which is anchored to the concrete, that eliminates the vibration from the general comings and goings of a job site, as you can see in pictures here. And I also have pictures here. A lot of times we can use a total station attached to a steel beam, which is not going to be affected by a lot of walking on this metal deck steel beam and up here you see it connected to a concrete slab that's not going to be affected by the comings and goings of this wooden deck over here as they're laying out the sleeves. Just a few ways to ensure that the total station will not be affected by vibration. The more it's affected by vibration and by potential slight shifts, the more it's going to go out of level, the more it's going to be calibrated, and the more often you're going to re you will need to restation it to ensure you're accurate. So ensure you're if you ensure it's secure, it'll really speed along your work. Let me show you a few other pictures in the case that you can't secure it to a column. Well, in that case, use a tripod star if you're on a concrete slab. Simply put the tripod star down, put the legs inside the tripod. That'll help quite a bit in ensuring that it doesn't slip or slide or be, be, get bumped too much. If you're working on dirt, obviously push this into dirt as best as possible to secure it in the ground. And over here, you can see an example where they actually caution taped it off. They made a wooden frame for the tripod, so that way it ensured that the total station wasn't slipping even though it was on dirt. So there's a lot of things you can do to ensure that the total station doesn't slip and slide, but it's vital to the speed of your layout and the accuracy of your layout. So I saved this final one, number nine, for last. And the reason I saved it for last is because it's kind of a thing all on its own. And it's called station over a point if possible. And just as a disclaimer, you can't do this unless you actually have a total station that has a plumb laser shooting down from the bottom of it. So currently only the Hilti POS 180 can do that or the POS 150, depending on the version you have. But let me explain why stationing over a point can be very beneficial to you. When you station over a point, the benefit is that the station, when you station over a point, it looks like this icon of the total station software it will know 
what coordinate it's over. There's not going to be any sort of stationing error on the station coordinate. So if you look at the two times I stationed it, whether it was an accurate sta inaccurate station or an accurate station, each time the error on the stationing location was zero. Because what you're doing is you're telling the total station exactly where it is. All you have to do when you station over a point is you measure to one other point and the total station will let you know whether that's an accurate measurement between the station and that control point, or it's gonna tell you if it's inaccurate and if it's inaccurate, in which way it's inaccurate. So before I get into some of the complications with this, let me just explain the benefits. The benefit of this, like I said before, is that the total station will know exactly the coordinate it's located on because you are literally telling it where it's located. The second thing is, as long as it is accurate, you are moving a lot of the angular errors that came with stationing the total station just anywhere on the job site, like we've talked about before. If you station over a point, those angular errors that you experience, they won't even exist because you're only measuring one other point and it's doing only a distance check and assuming that what you're telling it is true. The other benefit is that this is actually one of the best practices that surveyors use. They typically station over a point and use that point as the pivot point for the total station at all times. And usually what this is what the survey point might look like that they station over, something like this or an X on the ground, whatever it might be. And they simply take their total station station and station it right over that point. Now, I'm not sure in this picture if they were actually stationing over a point, but it's what it would look like. They would ensure that the sensor of the tripod is directly over that point and that the plumb laser is hitting it perfectly. Now, some words of caution. You can only use the station and one other point. And that's important because if that one other point is inaccurate, your stationing still might be inaccurate. So before you do this, you have to make sure that you are correct on the two points you're measuring before you go forward. But if you know you are correct, it's a very stable way to station the total station, and it's going to ensure you much greater accuracy going forward. And so the reason I was talking about how this is somewhat different than before, you are, you are only using two, two control points but it's still accurate because the station is being put over an exact point and when it hits the other point, it knows the direction it's looking already and it's also able to make a distance check just by measuring that one other point from the control point it's stationed over. So let's go on to the next slide and do a slight review. I recommend that you try all these methods all the way down to stationing over a point. If you can get down to station over a point and this works for you, do this every single time. If this is not possible or if it's just not working for you, then still you can go back and use the five, four to five control point method. Just make sure that they're accurate. But just to review, make sure you put the total station in the center of your layout area to lay out as many points as possible before you have to move the total station. Make sure that all the control points give clean angles to the rotation of the total station when instead of setting up. Try to use as many control points as possible so that you have m as much flexibility as possible with stationing and eliminating bad control points. Make sure all the control points are as far to the exterior of the layout area as possible so that all your layout points fall inside of them. Make sure that your control points are secure and not moving. Same with the backside prisms, that they're secure and not moving. Keep the prism low to the ground to eliminate prism pull error. Make sure that the total station is securely stationed and if possible, station over a point. I really hope this helped. Leave questions or comments in the comments section and we're happy to pull this discussion even further.